Father, perfect your work. Father, perfect your work. Father, perfect your work. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm believing God tonight that that which He has in mind to do, He will perfect it in Jesus' name. He has started His work in our life from Wednesday and He's taking us through to Thursday. And tonight, He will perfect the work. You are beginning your work. Father, perfect your work. You have begun your work in my life. Father, perfect your work. Can we rise up? You, you have begun your work in my life. Father, perfect your work. You have begun your work. Father, perfect your work. You have begun your work in my life. Father, perfect your work. You have begun your work. Father, perfect your work. You have begun your work in my life. Father, per Father, perfect your work. 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 Amen. Because of our time, I will pray. I will sit down and will listen to the word of God. Then we pray again. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Daddy will bless your name because you are God. And there is none like unto thee. Daddy, the last two days we've been looking at the unlimited power of God's grace. And we've looked at the unlimited power of God's grace at the, um, at the riches the exceeding riches in Christ Jesus. And this is what we've been enjoying. And the hour has come where you stood by the tomb of Lazarus and you lifted up your eyes to the heavens and you said, Father, glorify thyself in the Son that the Son might glorify you. And you called Lazarus forth from where he was and the Bible said that he that was dead came forth, but he was still binded. And you commanded, lose him and let him go. I decree tonight by the reason of the anointing that every individual that has come forth, but they are still binded. Tonight I command the second call. I say, lose them and let them go. Daddy, every destiny that has been tied, although they look as if they've left the place of their birth, and they've come into a country that looks as if it's flowing with milk and honey, but because the destinies are tied, they are laboring under a close heaven. I command today, by the voice and by the reason of the anointing, that let the heavens over their life be open in Jesus' name. Every sickness here present. Because the Bible said the stranger shall hear my voice and they shall obey. The people shall submit themselves unto me. Strangers shall fade away and be afraid out of their close places. I speak to every sickness. Regardless of what you are called. Regardless of how you got to where you are now. I command you to vacate those places. And be flushed out by the power and the blood of Jesus. 
Thank you, Holy Spirit. Daddy, we welcome your presence. Have your way, O Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Let's have a seat in his presence. I want to bless the name of the Lord for the great opportunity to be in your midst and also to share the word of God with us believers. And the last three days we've been looking at the theme, the unlimited power of God's grace. Can we say that together? The unlimited power of God's grace. The first night we looked at purchased and saved by grace. And the second night, we dive into preserved and secured by grace. And I remember vividly that yesterday, I will end the message by telling us that we need to fight to defend our territories. And we looked at the weapons, the spiritual weapons of war that are available to us as we fight this spiritual warfare. But like I told us, that God had not saved us through Jesus Christ to leave us to language or to allow the powers of darkness or the authorities of this world to overcome us. He had not bought us, like I made the an analogy yesterday about someone, a woman that has gone to the market to buy meat and I brought the meat home and I've left the meat on the worktop in the kitchen and just walked away. And for days, she's not returned back to it, neither has she preserved the meat. We all agree that the meat will rot in and it will not be good for use. So the same thing God, when he had taken us out of darkness in Colossians chapter 1 verse 13, he preserved us. The Bible says he took us out of darkness, out into the kingdom of his dear son. He now preserved us. And one of the things he told us in Zechariah chapter 2 in verse 2, it says that though Jerusalem shall be inhabited a city without war, for the multitude of men and the cattle in it, but the Lord, I the Lord, will be a wall of fire around them. So let the consciousness be in you that you carry God around you as you go. Praise the Lord. That's one of the grace that we enjoy as believers. And also, we look at God in the book of Psalm 103 verse 13 to verse 15 saying that as they go from one nation to another and a kingdom to the other he suffered no man to do them and he reproved kings on their behalf saying touch no man anointed do my prophet no harm by the special grace of god today like i promised us on the first day that we'll, we'll be looking at the message and sealed by grace can we say that together prospered and sealed by grace the god in the first day had told us how we were purchased in the second day he told us of how we are preserved now are we just preserved to remain who we used to be do you understand that there are so much riches in the kingdom that god wants you and i to be partakers of because through this will unbelievers come to the light of the gospel you don't need to preach to them sometimes when they look into your life and they say no 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 there's something about you that has changed since you started following this god that you're talking about when they look at you in your class as a student and they say oh no you used to be maybe in the middle class before but now you've moved to the higher level then they say what is the difference between you now and then and they want to start digging into it and from there they will discover that there is a God that is full of wisdom and that is where we are going to tonight prospered and secured and sealed by grace to prosper means to succeed in material things be financially successful to thrive, to do well spread flourish blossom can be physical flourishing or to grow strong and healthy now to seal listen to this carefully because this is where we are going to end tonight's meeting to seal means a device or a seal 
means a device or substance that is used to join things together so as to prevent them from coming apart or to prevent anything from passing between them. Now, a seal is also a piece of wax, lead, or other materials with an individual design stamp into it attached to a document to show it has come from a person who claims to have issued it. Praise the Lord. Do we understand that? That means that when God, who had bought us with, his pri with a price, and the price is the blood of Jesus Christ, and now he had preserved us in the kingdom, he is now going to seal us as his own. Amen. And how will he seal us as his own? These are things that we'll look into tonight. I will go to pray. I'll be handing us over to the one who is the seal over the life of every believer. Now in Ephesians chapter 1, I'll read just verse 13 and verse 14. The Bible says, In whom ye also trusted, after that you've had the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after ye have believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Praise the Lord. I'm sure someone is getting where we are going tonight. Now, let's look at the first part. I tried to do the prospered by God's grace. God is interested in our life. And as much as he's interested in our life, I'll rush through this because I want us to pray. As much as God is interested in our life, he wants us to prosper in certain aspects. Not just few aspects, in certain aspects, and as many aspects as possible as you will open up yourself to God to prosper you in those aspects. Number one is that he wants you to be a praise of his glory. If you read the book of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 10 to verse 12, Ephesians chapter 1, 5 to 6 and verse 14, you discover that God who had saved us out of darkness, God who had called you to be a Christian, God who had sent Jesus Christ to die for you, wants to see you and be glorified in your life. Do you understand when God is glorified in the life of a person, there is no blemish in that life. No problem in that life. Because God will not allow any blemish to touch a life where anytime people see that life, they say glory be to God. Another thing is this. In the book of Psalm 35, the book of Psalm 35, verse 27. Psalm 35, Verse 27, Bible says, Let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. Yea, let them say continually, Let the Lord be magnified, which hath pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. Praise the Lord. See, we are serving a God that had a pleasure in your prosperity. So if you are living from hand to mouth, God is still not glorified in your life. Or, um, let me put it this way, He's not glorified fully in your life. If you are not a blessing to other people, if they cannot come to you and say, hey, please, I need this, and you just say, you dip your hand in your pocket, without you thinking twice, you give it. You know, sometimes we have associated poverty with Christianity. But here the Bible is telling us that the unlimited grace of God covers prosperity of his saints. Look at the book of Third John. Third John verse 2. The Bible says, Behold, I wish above all things that ye may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospereth. 
So he's the God that looks for an all-round prosperity for his people. All-round what? Prosperity. Another thing about this God is he is the God that wants you to prosper in the wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Christ. If you read the book of Ephesians chapter 3 from verse 15 to verse 21, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 15 to 19, and 1 John chapter 2 verse 20 and 27, you discover that God desires that you should have a wisdom in the knowledge of who Christ is. Are we together? When you understand who Christ is, nobody can come in years to come and tell you something about God that is not true. Nobody can come and say, this is a new religion, and they just sweep you away as if you've never even been a Christian before. The God wants you to prosper in divine guidance and direction. In Proverbs chapter 3 from verse 1 to verse 7. In from verse 4, the Bible tells us, it says that lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge me and I will direct your path. If you are confused about a decision you want to take, that is not God's purpose. That is not, God does not want you to be a confused person. As a believer, God wants you to know exactly what you have to do, when you have to do it, and how you have to do it. In the book of Isaiah chapter 30 verse 21, the Bible will tell us that you will hear a voice in your ear telling you this is the way. Walk in it. When you turn to the left and when you turn to the right. Are we together? So, God's purpose for our life to prosper in all these aspects is the one we'll be praying about. It's not just about the enemy. We dealt with them yesterday. And we won't be wasting our time with them again. And I've given us assignment already. Go home and deal with them. Is that not what I said? Deal with them. They have no power over you. We've told ourselves yesterday that we are the anointed of the Lord. See, we are God's children. Now, another thing is this. In God, desiring divine direction from you, in Jeremiah chapter 3, 33 verse 3, Jeremiah chapter 33 in verse 3 Bible says ask of me and I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not ask of me you understand that is part of the, the unlimited power of God's grace that we should enjoy as believers you don't need a prophet are we together we want to lie to ourselves. We say that by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. By, by the prophet, the Lord established them. Yes, that's the scriptures. But he said, You are the royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. He had said to you, We are different from the Old Testament saints. We now carry the seal which I'll be showing us today the seal of the Holy Spirit, the seal of the ownership of God is upon our life. We now operate in the same anointing that a prophet operates in. Although we might not carry a title. So when situation happens, what does God want from you? Sister, go on your knee and say, Father, what direction are you pointing at? I'll give us an example or a testimony that happened many years ago. I will, it was when we were about rounding up our school time in Nigeria and we had, we've handed over to a new set of executives then in school. 
and we had a meeting. So we had a wedding in somewhere in Ochogo, whoever knows Ochogo in Nigeria. We went for that meeting or the wedding, and I saw this sister. And because I've number one, she was interviewed in my room. As I was part of the executive then, so she was interviewed in my room. And two, I've met her on few occasions. So I thought that maybe God is speaking concerning this sister. Are we together? Now, then I now gave God an assignment. I said, God, if this sister will serve me food in this wedding and also kneel down a bit and show a bit of respect, then she must be the one. Don't laugh. This is very serious matter. And do you know one thing? She did everything. She came, gave me the food and knelt down a little and I said, my God, that is it. You get it? That is it. And do you know, because God is so faithful, I remember that day vividly. I got back home, traveled all the way back to Lagos, praising God and thanking him for what he has done. Now, all I need to do is just to go and show my intention. But do you know, that night before I slept, I took my Bible, opened it to Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3, and I said, God, the Bible says, the hearts of me, and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. And do you know what I saw? That same night, while I slept, I had two dreams. The first dream, I saw this same, I saw a pig wearing the same lace that that sister was wearing at the wedding. Number one. Number two, the same night, I dreamt again and I saw that I was in a banking hall and someone, a old lady, held the lady's hand and came straight to me and told me, you cannot take my daughter. Yeah, she told me that she is, that the son, that the child of a lion is a lion, although he might still be small. When I woke up, immediately I thank God, I thank God for not leaving me in the dark. Do you know that when we handed over to them, that sister disappeared, she didn't function. See, if God should have left me in the dark, I would have been a messed up person. Probably I won't be standing in front of you today. Sometimes they go, I was opposed to also, I met another lady when I came into United Kingdom. And they, there's a prophecy about this lady that God had given her to you. And but because I'm a person that I always probe deeper into whatever people give me or instruction. So I deep probe deep. And in I had a dream again. And in that dream, I saw that I was lying on a bed, on a sick bed. In the hospital and this person came to greet me and she was like a dwarf and i'm asking myself how oh, where did i come in contact with this dwarf do you understand i woke up i called my parents i said come this is no joke now come this person no no see if god will not open your eyes you will fall into pit and you will now be praying to come out of it. And it might take years and it might delay your journey. But the, the unlimited grace of God upon our life reveals to us the secret things. The Bible says secret things belong revealed, belong unto you. Have you gotten those things that are revealed to you? You get it. You need that grace, and that is what we'll be praying for today. That enough is enough. When I step into a place, I don't need to spend the night before the heavens will open my eyes, before my discerning spirit will connect back to my root. I will tell me exactly what spirit lives or what spirit operates in where I am. Because if not, I won't know how to fight well. I will get into trouble easily. 
one day my pen is moving one day I would, those years when I was doing my national service in Nigeria a sister who I trust so much as part of the prayer team which I was leading then the sister I trust so much one day she brought a food to me because I, those days we live in the family house like a church like this that's where we live as executive she brought food but thank God that will not leave his own people in the dark before the in the night before that day because those people the other people live outside so they come for fellowship we stay on campus on, on, on the in, in the church compound now she came that night i saw in a dream that she brought a kula of food to me and immediately i opened the food about to eat it i had the voice don't eat this food and I gave it out in the dream. Do you know this person has never brought me any food before? That evening she brought the food. That same evening she brought the food. If I did not see before she came, I will eat that food. Probably I'll be gone. See, a lot of us are carrying things around that were in the first place the heavens were shouting. My son, pause. My son, don't go to that direction. My son, don't take this. My son, don't do that. But we cannot hear. Why? Because our seal is broken. See, God's grace will bring divine rest prosperity. In Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 6 to verse 10. And in Joel chapter 2, verse 25 to verse 27. In Joel chapter 2, the Bible will tell us, is it that the years that the canker worm are fitting, the locust, the palmer worm, and the caterpillar shall be restored back unto us. It shall be restored back. This is what grace will do. Grace will speed it is up. It will take you, catapult you from where you think you are. Where you think you are laboring, it will extend. It will multiply your steps. And before you know it, people will be asking you, how did you get here? You are not qualified to be here. No, you don't need to be qualified. In Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18, the Bible says, He is the God that giveth us power to make wealth. And somebody said that the word power there is the same word ideas to make wealth. You think you do not have what it takes to be well wealthy? See, inside of you, Elijah asks that woman, that widow, what do you have in your house? Do you understand? The woman came and said, Your servant is dead. He left us with death. The debtors have come. They have come to take my two sons away. Elijah said, forget about all those stories. What do you have in your house? You are left with something. And that is what the world is looking for, but you don't appreciate it. You don't appreciate it until the, your eyes is open. And you can see what God had already planted in you long before now. There's something inside of you. Psalm 1 verse 1 to verse 3 the, the grace of the Lord will prosper you whatsoever you do it will prosper the works of your hand it doesn't matter what you do do you understand somebody said that we go to school we pay money to go to school and when we finish from school we earn money again. Do you get it? So, you've used your money to go and earn money. Beautiful. But sometimes, you might not even need to waste your time. Are we together? Only what you need, sometimes is God opening your eyes of understanding and saying, is there of you in studying? 
See, some causes in this country, it might just be a weak cause. And that weak cause will fetch you nothing less than maybe 300, 400 pounds in a day. Do you understand that? We need God to do what? Open our eyes. We need God to open our eyes. We need him to direct our path. A friend of mine came all the way from Australia to come and do a course in this country. When he finished, I told him, what job are you looking for? He said he's seen jobs of 400 pounds. But he doesn't want them. He wants the one of 600 pounds a day. Do you understand? When God opens your eyes, he directs your path. And he said, my son, go this direction. And the rest of your life, your friends will be struggling. They will be running up and down. They will be chasing shadows. You are just moving. In Exodus chapter 15, verse 26, the God is interested in your good health because it will glorify his name. Is it